Hi, hello, good morning. My name is Opemi Kade. I hope you had a great week. You're welcome to the Across the Atlantic Ministry. And of course, I'm here to share the beautiful word of God. Merry Christmas in advance. It's beautiful to, you know, see the, you know, see the year running out. Because, I mean, a whole lot of us have been thinking about, you know, what the year looks like, things that have happened. But what's most beautiful is we're seeing the latter part of the year. You know, we're able to see that situations, I mean, they've been back and forth as regards to, you know, different things that have happened in different parts of the world. Now, you know, the world is dealing with Omicron. <laughs> Last year, 2020, you know, we did with the, with, with the COVID-19. And I mean, that caused a whole lot of people, you know, trauma, loss, business. I mean, it's even hard to travel. You know, a lot of, a lot of people have planned trips. And now there are different things going on. You can't even travel. So, and it shows the uncertainty in the world. It, so, it shows you that there's a lot of uncertainties that might just come up and you might not be prepared for and the only way you can be prepared for sanctities is by working with Christ you know it boils down to the decisions that you make I mean your next level the things that you're hoping for and the devil might come and you know come with his uncertainty but the only assurance that can be given to a man on earth is the certainty in Christ. And that is why it's important to constantly, you know, walk with Christ, to trust Him. Because in Him is where there are certainties. That regardless of what the devil brings up, that you always find yourself, I mean, up to task as regards to the challenge. And of course, victory, which is most important, is rest assured. So yes, once again, you are welcome to today's uh, message i pray that as i share the word it is you holy spirit who speaks that you speak from you speak through me and whatever i say father lord shall be laid on the tables of the heart of men in the mighty name of jesus amen my topic for today is it's not too late it is not too late and it brackets the story of from saul to paul it's never too late. I think the reason why people have not made that life-changing decision is because they feel like it's too late. So when I decide to start walking with Christ, how will people look at me? What will they say? Ah, so is this the same Opa Emi? Is this the same guy? Is this the same Pepinazi? Of course, there will be a lot of questions. The same thing that happened to Saul in the Bible. Saul was a Pharisee. He was a persecutor of disciples of Christ. He was a persecutor of those who love Christ, of the synagogue. He hated anything that relates to Jesus Christ. So it was that kind of man that they would send to, to distribute letters to pastors, to disciples, and tell them that we're giving you an ultimatum. If you don't stop preaching the word of Christ, we are going to summon you. And even he persecuted to the point of death. That was all saw the Pharisee was in the Bible. And this boils down to a lot of people who are in that face where ah, I am too deep in this. I am lost in this sin. It's too late for me. How? How would God even <laughs> set his eyes on me, think about me, not to talk of him forgiving me or showing me mercy? I've been in this face before. I've been in the face of Saul, who later turned to Paul. Saul never wanted to hear anything that, that, that related or relates to Jesus Christ. Was the great persecutor. But on the way to Damascus, on the same journey, yeah, you know, he wanted to go drop letters. 
and also, of course, place ultimatums on disciples of Christ. Some of them, that after this particular time, if you guys keep preaching the word of God, I am going to deal with you. With the back, with the, with, with, he had the back of the Pharisees, a couple of priests. But on that way, that was where he met Christ. He met Christ. And God appeared to him. That's Jesus Christ appeared to him. And told him, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul went on his feet. He couldn't even contain the light. That is the light, the bright light that you need in your life. The light that takes away darkness. That flushes away darkness. He couldn't contain it because that is what everyone needs. Light. Because a whole lot of people are walking in the dark. Feeling that it's too late for me to find Christ. Feeling that it's too late for God to even show me mercy. Whereas he's, he's at your beckon. He is there, he's ready. His arms are wide open to let you in. He's ready to redeem you, restore you. And so, Saul, who later was turned to Paul, fell on his knees because he saw light. And after having a conversation with Christ, with Christ, the Lord, what do you want me to do? When he fell on his knees, he fell on his knees in obedience because he saw light. And God, Jesus Christ, wanted him to stop persecuting him, persecuting his disciples, his, ambas uh, his ambassadors. And the, the same thing we see all around. It seems like there's a reproach for the things of Christ, for the things of God. You see how people persecute the doctrine of Christ. There's a lot of interest in the things of the world compared to the things of light. And so, Saul so fell to his knees. And when he, when he stood back up, he lost his sight. And that also shows you that when God is ready for you, he shows you his power. He makes you understand that in light there is power. There's no more ignorance. When he stood up, he lost his sight because of the light he saw. And when God wants to circumcise your heart, when he wants to circumcise you and call you, sometimes he has to blind the sight of the world and give you the sight of light, which is the sight of Christ. And so, he said on the way to Damascus, keep going, there will be an encounter for you. Saul hand was held down to Damascus. He was in a place for three days, three days of soliloquizing, of crying. A man who was a persecutor of the children of God was blind. He lost his sight, the sight of the world of wickedness, of the hardiness in the heart, of hate. It was in that face and it kept on. You know, there's a place where God will put you. He wants you to think. He have a total thought through. And so I was in that place, filled with anguish, sadness. And our God is a God of mercy because when he's ready for you, nothing stands in his way. And then he sent his prophet Ananias to him. I said, there will, there will be someone that will come to you. I will lay his hand on you. Introduce you to salvation and baptize you. And then, Ananias was called upon. He went to Saul and then did what God instructed him to do. And of course, Saul, who later became Paul, the same Paul that we talk about. The same Paul that has written beautiful things, beautiful, I mean, books in the Bible. The hands of God was laid on him and Saul now became poor. And he gained back his sight. But the sight he gained back was a circumcised height, art. The sight that could see Christ, that could see light, that understood light, and also share that light to the world. So this is a wake-up call for you and I. 
that is not too late. It was the same question I was asking. That Father Lord, how? So I would let go of this, let go of that, and let go of this. It was a difficult decision. But he had to blind, blind me. He put you in a place where you know that it is him or no one else. And then I understood what it meant to walk in light. Because walking in light, like I said last week, is in peace, is in love, is in abundance. Because one of the most important things that hold people back is how, how would I, oh, so if, if I stop this, how would I, you know, how would I gain resource? How would I make money? How would I do this? How would I take care of my family? How would I? You keep on asking questions. Question that the devil wants you to ask. But he wants you to break off that face. Tell yourself that it's not too late. Because for him, it's never, it's never, it's never too late. And this takes us to this part in Galatians. It says, Paul's narrative in Galatians states that 14 years after his conversion, he went to Jerusalem. It is not known what happened during this time, but both Acts and Galatians provide some details. At the end of this time, Barnabas went to find Paul and brought him to Antioch. He told us that Paul kept on having, for 14 years, he brewed, stayed, loved Christ. And I mean, he overshadowed himself with the things of Christ. And he tells us that it is important that as a Christian, that even after you've gotten that conversion, you have to brood yourself in him. Constantly walk with him. Constantly trust him. Put your trust on nothing else. And this is where the circumcision keeps on going. It's one thing to accept Christ as your Lord, as your Lord and Savior. It's another thing to walk with him. To, to trust him. Because there is no loss when you walk with Christ. It is not too late when you walk with Christ. Regardless of the sin. Regardless of what? His blood is there to wash away those sins. To restore and redeem you. So stop asking questions. Stop asking questions and make that decision. I'm here to lead you unto him. To let you know that your soul can be turned to Paul. That indulgence men craved about you can be changed when you walk in light. And also, you can also be the light of the world. That after you meet Christ, you can also share that light to others, to friends, to, 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 I mean, to people that are lost and feels like it's late for them. Because I, Opa Mikaude, is a living example. I pray that these words of God are laid on the table of your heart, that it brings light, goodness, salvation to your body, spirit, and soul. In the mighty name of Jesus. To round this up, this is our prayer point. Pray this prayer from the bottom of your heart. That Father Lord, open the light of my heart to see the clear vision you have for me. Open the light of my heart, Father Lord, to see the clear vision that you had for me. Open the light of my heart. Open the light. Open the light. Encounter. I want an encounter with you. Open the light of my heart. Open, open, open the light of my heart to see the clear vision you have for me. Pray this from the bottom of your heart. Pray this from the bottom of your heart. It will come because it's always there. The exams are always wide open to let you in. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I hope that this word speaks to anyone listening. It touches the heart of men and it brings light to their life. I wish you, of course, Merry Christmas in advance. Make sure you have a, you know, merry, dance, be happy, and of course, walk in certainty, which is walking with Christ. Once again, my name is Okwemi Kaude. This is Across the Atlantic Ministry, and I wish you the very best. Shalom. Bye, guys.